So in this video, I'm going to talk about different ways offspring are reproduced. Offspring is just a fancy term for, for organisms of the next generation, so like children for humans. Uh, there are two different ways to reproduce offspring. There's asexual reproduction. Asexual just means not sexual. A is often a root word for not. Um, and it just involves one parent then. So uh, if one parent is passing all of their DNA on to the next uh, uh, offspring, then that offspring will generally be an exact copy of the original parent, uh, barring mutation. Mutation is possible for both types of reproduction, but as we discussed in the molecular genetics unit, mutation is fairly rare. Uh, sexual reproduction involves two parents, and since there are two parents, they're just gonna give half of their DNA each um, to generate the, the, the full set of DNA in the offspring. All right, let's look at some examples of asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Uh, in asexual reproduction, uh, these are little yeast here um, who are just uh, single-celled organisms, so when they make a copy cell, that cell just kind of buds off and um, uh, that's the next uh, exact copy offspring. Um, some uh, animals like hydra can do that as well. Here's like a little, um, little hydra coming off of the bigger parent here. It'll eventually pop off and sort of be an exact copy clone of the original parent. Um, plants actually can do that as well. If you kind of um, get a big enough piece of the stem and uh, possibly root of a plant, you can actually um, sort of plant it in the ground or put it in some water um, and it will regrow all the roots, stems, and leaves that um, originally made it up. And that fragment will be sort of a, a separate organism from the original plant that it came from. So um, some, a quick example of sexual reproduction in plants anyway. Um, many plants, as we'll see, make flowers that contain pollen, um, and the pollen is actually contains the sperm of the plant, and when a pollinator brings the pollen to a flower of its species, then the sperm has a chance to uh, fertilize the egg within the flower, and then that will lead to the next offspring. Um, and then we'll see later that maybe the, uh, these same plants will take their offspring and put them inside of seeds and maybe surround the seeds with fruit um, as a way of getting their offspring far away so that they have a chance to grow. So we'll talk more about that later. Um, what I'm really trying to convince you of is that actually most species have ways of reproducing both ways, asexually and sexually. And so we'll want to really make clear why um, each type of reproduction can be advantageous. There are some exceptions to that. Uh, bacteria can only reproduce asexually um, because they're only capable of doing a copying type of cell division, as it turns out. And then um, plenty of other animals, including us humans, can only reproduce sexually. So um, there are some exceptions, but lots of organisms that can reproduce both ways. So let's talk more about um, uh, thinking about the chromosomes and how they're passed on to offspring. Um, if we were to think of a species where maybe the diploid cells have four total chromosomes, like below, maybe this is kind of my current organism. Um, it was, if, if produced asexually, then this, uh, the parent had to be the exact same. And the idea is that to reproduce our current organism, the parent just copied all of the chromosomes and then uh, passed every single uh, a copy of every single one of them onto the offspring. Again, barring mutation, the, uh, the organism will be an exact copy of the original parent. If this organism itself goes on to reproduce asexually, then the same thing. And so again, the idea is that asexual reproduction for the most part, generates exact genetic copies of that one parent. Why might that be a good idea? Um, well, first of all, you don't have to find a mate with asexual reproduction. You yourself can just produce offspring. So maybe it produces offspring faster than sexual reproduction. Um, and there are cases where maybe making exact genetic clones could be very beneficial to that offspring. Um, what if your species lives in an environment that generally isn't changing, it's very stable? Your species might be very well adapted to live in that environment. So maybe if you are an exact clone of an organism that itself is surviving very well, then perhaps you'll survive very well. So there are plenty of advantages to asexual reproduction. Let's um, uh, flip now and look at sexual reproduction. Let's say that we have our same organism from before, um, but what if that organism was produced sexually? 
Well, maybe the parents could have looked like this. Um, notice that each parent is a little genetically different from our current organism. Um, that's because when they reproduce that organism sexually, they just uh, passed on one of each of their chromosomes, one of each of their homologous pairs. Maybe this parent um, passed along those chromosomes, whereas the next parent passed along those chromosomes, and that's what led to our current organism. Now, what's really interesting to note is if those two parents produce another offspring, they could pass on a very different half of themselves. And so that's why if you have biological brothers or sisters, that's why you, you have many things in common coming from the same two parents, um, but they might have passed on different halves of themselves, and that's why you have some differences from your brother or sister as well. If this organism eventually finds a mate and goes on to reproduce with that mate, maybe they pass on this half of themselves randomly and produce this offspring. And so really, I hope you're getting to see the theme of sexual reproduction is that you can really mix things up genetically by passing on a different half of yourself each time. And that really is the purpose of sexual reproduction. The whole point is to generate the genetic variety needed, um, perhaps in environments that are stressful or unstable. Maybe organisms that are a little bit different in the next generation might have traits that help them survive change. Uh, for example, what if your species is uh, facing a new disease that's making you sick? Or what if there's a new predator on the scene who's eating a lot of members of your species? Well, maybe by having offspring that are a little bit different, by mixing things up, maybe some organisms would just have genetic resistance to the disease. Or maybe they would have some kind of strategy like hiding from the predators who are eating so many members of your species. Um, and so that really is the purpose of sexual reproduction. And so what we just kind of covered very briefly are just two types, sexual and asexual reproduction. And we tried to explain why um, there are advantages to both types of reproduction. And that's why many organisms can reproduce both ways.